Ah, good morning class. I'm Professor Hatter. Welcome to a new lecture series that we're starting today. This has been one I've been wanting to do for such a long time. Uh, last year I had the early goings of my outline, and the uh, the rubric, and the um, the structure of this uh, particular lecture. Maybe it's a new class we could call this, maybe. But it's a new mini video series, new video series that I'm going to be talking about hats. Duh, I'm talking about hats. But not a new hat that I got among these hats here. These are example hats I'm going to use for a hat topic. You know, there are a lot of hat topics out there that are discussed throughout the multiple and many social media platforms, whether it be through YouTube, through Instagram, through Facebook, Twitter, um, I think Snapchat maybe, um, Messenger Pigeon, I think has been gaining some new popularity again, it's been making a comeback. Um, for sure I, you know, send out smoke signals of, you know, what's cool with the hats and talking about, you know, that I take my sticker off most times. But I wanted to make a new mini-series talking about these hat topics that sometimes are talked about by most other hat channels and kind of talk about in my own perspective. And then some hat topics that I have for the future, they're going to be about things that, we again, we talk about normally, but they haven't been put into a hat channel video by anyone else. So it's going to be a very fun mini-series. It's going to be, these are going to be long videos. Imagine a TED Talk, but for hats. That's what the idea of this mini-series is going to be. But uh, we're calling this Hat Chats. So this new Hat Chat series, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about different hat topics. So in this first Hat Chat, we're going to be talking about a universal topic that a lot of other hat channels have talked about. But I'm going to put my own flavor on it, my own spin to it, my own perspective to it. It's going to be a topic quite universal that impacts a lot of hat collectors out there, a lot of 5950 fitted collectors out there. We're talking about hat sizing. We're going to talk about, for some of you new hat collectors out there, how do you find the right hat size? Uh, how do you know what's the right hat size? How do you figure out you know, what's too loose, or what's too tight, and then how do you maintain your hat size, what happens if your head grows like mine did at one point last year, uh, and what do you do if a hat you get uh, doesn't fit, well if it's too loose, or if it's too tight, is there something you can do about it, and how do you know what to do, how to buy when you're online for a certain hats, or Maybe you're like in a uh, garage sale, maybe you found some old hats, and you're trying to figure out, hmm, does that fit me the way I think it does? So we're going to go through a lot of that and more, of course. We're going to go into the lab later on in class and do some hands-on lab work. So, get out a notebook, pen or pencil, because class is in session. Let's go. Let me start off with this. I know a lot of you are very appreciative about hat diversity. I know you all love hat diversity. I know a lot of you appreciate the the fits of dad hats that you don't really have to worry that is it gonna fit? Is it gonna fit? No, because they're adjustable. Uh, that's what's so great about them. Same thing with uh, snapbacks that they have adjustments in the back whether it be New Era or Nike, go Redbirds and go uh, Panthers. Um, so, you know, these are, you know, these are like structured hats, like fitted hats, but they're adjustable. 
But we're not going to be talking about adjustable hats today. That'll be for another time. So I know a lot of you are disappointed that we're not going to be really talking about hat diversity here today. But that's okay. That We're going to talk about that another time. Strictly fitted hats today. I'm going to join the conformity and be like every other hat YouTube channel out there. You might enjoy, you might learn something that I talk about here. So to get into fitted hats. Fitted hats have been a standard for hat collectors for years and decades. My first fitted hat uh, I got when I was actually in college. I had about 30 some hats uh, before I got my first fitted. I officially started hat collecting in uh, August of 2016 when I got my first lid hat. And it was a 47 brand hat adjustable with Velcro. It was at a lid that I got my first fitted hat in March of 2017, a Chicago Cubs 2016 World Series Champions side patch. And when I went to lids, actually the funniest thing is, I got this Cubs World Series Championship hat from 2016 in 2017 at a lid store in Cleveland, Ohio. Kind of funny. But when I was there, it was a little lackluster of a experience of finding my first fitted hat. I went up to the wall because I saw one of the band guys, it was on a band trip in the spring of 2017. We would always take like a big band trip, 10 days on spring break, go across the country. And that year we went out east, one of the guys on a mall stop got a Kansas City Royal hat because that was his favorite team. And I thought, you know, I need a new hat too, I'm getting some hat jealousy. So I went to the lids and was looking across the wall of all the fitted hats and turned around and asked, how do I know what hat fits me? And they just said, whatever fits, fits. Great job and customer service and experience. Cleveland lids. So I was really in the dark when it came to figuring out what hat size I was. So for me, I just grabbed one hat and really whatever fit me, that's what I went with. So for the longest time, I thought I was a seven and five ace. And then to come eventually that really, this was just a sizing error that I was actually a seven and a half hat size. And these all around fit better. I kept getting more 7 5 eighths, but I kept feeling looser than this did. Now this one felt snug around my head, and it fit around my head. We'll go over that later on in around the head, on top of the head terminology. Now, when you're trying to figure out what hat size you are. More often, if you're kind of a s smaller person, uh, more speaking of, you know, kind of the skinnier built side, maybe slim built side, and you're about maybe, you know, a hat size about seven and three eighths or a quarter is the average hat size. But I would say start off going to a lid store if you're getting to the fitted Find a seven and three eighths hat size. And then from there, you'll put it on and then you'll figure out, well, it's too tight. So you'll go up a size to a seven and a half. Uh, but if you're feeling that it's big, that it's kind of loosey goosey, that you can play around with it, you can put a few fingers up there, then size down to seven and fourth. And if you're more of a uh, larger body portioned kind of person, um, and you kind of feel like you have a bigger head, then start off with a seven and three quarters. The hats are measured by ace and quarters. So one ace, quarter, three ace, half, five ace, etc. So start without a three quarters, seven and three quarters hat size. And then from there, you'll be able to tell, well, you know, again, fits loose or fits tight, then you can go up or down. A size 8 is also a very popular hat size, so if you know that you're on the uh, huskier build side, then try an 8. But of course, you know, it's going to be your own experience. Maybe the lid associate there is going to have some insight themselves. They can help out 
with their experience, you know, they have so many people come in every day finding a new hat, they're going to help you out the best they can. Hopefully you don't go to one in Cleveland, because they didn't help me for sure. All right, so now that you have your hat size, you're all good to go. You're all set. Thank you for watching this hat chat session. I'll see you the next time in class, everyone. What's that, Billy? Oh. Oh, yeah, I do have more hats to talk about here. You think I should talk more about the, the sizing of hats? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. So, there's more than just finding the one fit and you're, boom, you're done. Not entirely, because there are different fits with different styles of fitted hats. There is the standard 5950 hat, which is a high crown and more often a flat brim. Or kind of like a semi-curve brim. But there is a hat style out there called low profile, where... The brim is pre-curved when you get it, and it allows the hat to kind of ever so slightly kind of angle back, lean back in its seat. And you have a hat style that is a little bit more like a dad hat almost, where it's a very curved brim. Not so much here, but it's more of a relaxed style. Now, low profiles aren't the most popular hats out there, but I love low profile, that's why I use it for my custom Mount Prospect hat, and I love low profile hats because it feels similar to the curve of a dad hat, but also that it's a fitted hat still, like the players would wear on the field. So it's the best of both worlds, like this Atlanta Braves hat. For some low profile hats, it will actually say in here, low profile, and then sometimes it'll say it on the sticker, and those stickers will be black and gold instead of gold and black. So remember when getting a low profile there's a lot of different physics and mechanics and structure uh, and science that goes into the fit of a low profile compared to a standard on-field hat like this one. Whereas when you bend the brim you release a tension in the sweatband releasing the sizing and making it feel a little bit wider, as well as leaning back the crown from the 90 degree angle and having it more obtuse angle, leaning back in the seat. So a seven and a half compared to a seven and a half low profile, you'll be able to tell the difference with two things. The sticker, there'll be a black and gold sticker instead of a gold and black sticker. And within the hat, it'll actually say on the, should say on the tag, low profile. But always keep in mind that maybe sometimes if you size down to a 7 3 eighths, that you'll be able to get a good fit because sometimes if you do get a you know seven and a half at the low profile and you're a seven and a half already sometimes it might fit a little bit wider a little bit loosey-goosey because that tension is broken from the brim being bent and it's kind of a theme all around with other low profiles. And of course, low profiles do differ in the angle and the bend of the brim. Especially when I get on-field hats, I like to get the low profiles. If it's like an exclusive hat from Hat Club, uh, it's only flat brim. You have to curve the brim yourself. From the low profiles that I've gotten, not every bend is the same. Some are a little bit more than others. Some are similar, some are a little bit more, some are less. So, of course, best is to try on in store. But, of course, when you can't try on in store, either use your best judgment or try to even size down because sometimes that might be a benefit. We'll talk about later about if you do size down, how to stretch out. Now, sometimes your hat size will change in some variations. Primarily in two ways. One, if you have hair, your hair grows out, it will make an effect on your hat size. Some hats that feel a little bit looser before will fit a little bit tighter because your hair is growing and the extra follicles that are there 
make up for that empty space. Of course, for, for those who are bald, then you just gotta stick with your one hat size then. Another thing that can affect your hat size is your head growing. I had this happen to me last year. I remember when I was doing a live stream opening up this Las Vegas Aviators hat, uh, I hadn't gotten a haircut for probably three months. Granted, it was the lockdown, so uh, the early days of the pandemic, barber shops and salons weren't open, and the person I go to, she wasn't open, so my hair had grown out a lot. So when I did put on the hat at first, I'm like, oh my god, this is really tight. But I'm like, you know what? It's fine because my hair is grown out, so once I get the haircut, it'll be fine. I'll just go back to my normal size then. Yeah, no, it did not. Somehow my head grew, actually. Uh, it could have been caused by stress. It could have been caused by, like, a second puberty that uh, adults go through, where you kind of grow into your more adult body, kind of in your late 20s into your 30s. Your metabolism gets different. Your posture is different. Um, your energy level is different. Uh, either you can't stay awake during the day, or it's hard to sleep at night, or any other factor like that. Granted, I'm in my mid-20s, so it seemed like a really early second puberty. Now, is it science of the second puberty? Not really. It's just kind of like a myth and kind of a way to talk about the evolution of your body within your lifetime. But for me, my head grew, and it was weird how when I had gotten a pre-order of Hat Club hats, that these seven and a half hats didn't really fit right most of the time. Like this one, this one fit great. This, this Toronto Blue Jays fit like a glove. It fit, wasn't too tight, wasn't too loose, but it was very nice. But compared to my Braves, it was a little tight. I needed to like, you know, room it out a bit. And then with like my White Sox one, that one was kind of squeezing on my melon a little bit. So it was a little weird how my head grew and it caused me to panic that one, I would have to either sell majority of my hats that were seven and a half and buy seven five A's or figure out a way to fix it. And eventually it caused me to panic where I kept getting seven five A's through hat club and as the year went along, I noticed that they felt looser on me and they didn't fit quite right, so I came to the conclusion that my head went through some sort of random growth spurt. Now, some people do grow their heads and retain their new head size. Um, sometimes it happens in adults. More often it happens with kids. Like, if you're in your teen years and you're still growing, it's, it's totally natural to grow into your new hat size. But more often... Hats aren't like pants, where you can't, you know, just grow into them. Like, oh, I'll just grow into it. Not so much. And sometimes those labels can be misleading, too, with those sizes. Just like shoes and jeans, even though the number on the size label says whatever size it is, doesn't always mean that it actually is that hat size or that particular size. Like this Hawaii, University of Hawaii fitted hat. This is a great one. I love that it's this nice emerald. I remember this was one of the first fitted hats I got through someone through the Fitted Hat Society Facebook group. I was very excited. I had a virtual football team that I was a coach of for the University of Hawaii football team. And I was a coach for them. Took them to do two national championship titles. Great time. Wanted a fitted hat for them. I got this hat finally, and when I put it on, oh, no, 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 you, you, it, it, it says seven and a half, it, how, how can you lie to me, don't lie to me, you don't feel like a seven and a half, why would you betray me, you're a liar, liar, now, granted, it kind of is also the material that it's wool, so it might fit a little bit tighter, but, Still, you do have some occasions where you do have tighter-fitting hats 
than what the actual size says on the tag. And it's always unfortunate. Now in this case, this is a more modern New Era hat. And you can kind of tell by the tag, by the sizing tag. I'll try to get a good picture of that for you. Where you can see it's just, you know, 7.5, 59.6 centimeters in the measurement. But it still fits tight. Now, there are some cases where you'll get an older hat. I have these two NHL hats that do say seven and a half, but these are older types of sizing tags. These ones more often fit a little bit tighter. They're kind of a smaller head size than the current 5950 fitted hats are. Now, another difference is where they're made. These both are USA made. Not many hats are made in the USA anymore because the Derby plant in New York for New Era uh, ceased operations uh, a few years ago. It's kind of sad, but you have to kind of play the guessing game where some countries where New Era hats are made, China for sure is the biggest one. There's Vietnam, there's Bangladesh, uh, there's Haiti. I think there's Thailand that's also there that makes New Era hats. A lot of those hats have their own kind of sizing characteristics. It seems like New Era did not send out the same tape measure to those countries. So they all have kind of different tendencies in sizing. Of course, there's going to be the stereotypes of, oh, it came from China, it's going to be a better fit. It came from Vietnam, oh, it's going to fit a little bit loose. Did it come from Bangladesh, oh, it's going to fit tight. So make sure you get maybe a size up then. And the quality might not be so good. So there's a lot of variations, especially with where they're made. And sometimes how old the hats are. Like these ones probably came from the mid to late 2000s. I don't know how this one came from the 2000s when Atlanta Flames haven't been a team since the 1980s. But there's always a cool one to have in the collection. And I'll even... And, you know, sometimes when you do get a hat, you can kind of feel already, nah, it's not going to fit. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, it's so tight. It's tight around the head. And, it's, you know, you're thinking probably in about half an hour, I'm going to get a migraine from this or a very bad headache. Now, it can be said that the opposite can, can happen where when I was or when I thought I was a 75 Ace, I got this old Northwestern hat, New Era. This for sure is from the 90s, based on the logo that they use within the tag and being USA made and the sweatband and it's it's old. It's, I can tell it's old. And it's a 758. So I thought, hey, that'll fit me. Maybe a little loose. Oh, way loose. Way loose. It's like, you know, I can't see anything. So, you know, sometimes Older hats have a deception as well with, you know, maybe being too big. So, you know, best to try on it in store if you can. But, you know, since this one, like, came from eBay, this is a little hard to kind of gauge. And sometimes you just got to take the hit when it doesn't fit right. Now, of course, there are ways and methods to shrink a hat, but, like, this one is too extreme to shrink. But I still keep it just because it's an old hat. It's a cool hat. And just for when I would make a future video for hat sizing like this. Another example, even modern day hats, sometimes like this Grogu hat, can also fit very loose. And sometimes you just gotta take the hit, or sometimes you just gotta deal with it and be like, well, you know, it'll be fine, I guess. I won't wear it too much, but just to know that it fits on the head is okay. one way to tell how good a hat fits is does it fit around your head or on your head does it fit like it's hovering on top of your head like ooh, I'm floating I'm using the force to float on your head I'm not snug on you I'm not fitting on you but I'm just on top of the head or do they actually fit around the head that each corner 
doesn't have any loose material that you can't, you know, bunch it up in the back and have some overlapping fabric. That is also a way to kind of tell how a hat fits when you first get a hat. And sometimes you just have to, you know, take the risk and realize that, you know, it fits just so loose, but it would have been nice if I would have gotten a size down. Now, of course, material is also a factor where, like, these old Prolite hats have a different fit. It shows a 7 5 eighths compared to a 7 half, being this one being also low profile. Material also has a factor, not just between polyester and wool, but also it's kind of like a plasticky fabric, a nylon, really, or if it's like Gore-Tex, this kind of different polyester that they say on the website, if you're one hat size, then size up, because, yeah, this one is a nice hat, but it fits tight. Do the best you can with making sure that you read up on the material and how it might fit. Now, there's sometimes where maybe it's like a hat club drop, and it's like the last size available, or maybe it's a hat on eBay, and it's a size lower than you are, and you're like, it's so rare that I just have to have it. Even though it's 7 3 eighths and I'm a 7 and a half, you know, oh my god, it fits tight. Even at a low profile, it would loosen up. The theory that it would loosen up. But, you know, there are cases where you just gotta get a hat size down just because it's a rare hat or the hat that you've wanted for so long or you need to finish your collection. And you know that if you keep wearing the hat like it is, you're going to get a migraine out of it, which is not comfortable. Or even when, from hat club hats, or even when you buy from lids from in-store, you know, the, the hat fits just a little tight, even though it says seven and a half, and you're thinking, and you're thinking, why? How, how, how can I fix this? The answer is, you can't. You just gotta deal with it. So, that's it. Good night, everyone. Great class. I know, Billy. I know there's this thing out there. It's a hat jack. I was just playing with them. Can I have a little fun here? Jeez. Mr. Serious. Now, granted, this one is from Hat Club, but there are other companies that make hat jacks out there. Hat jacks are designed to stretch out your hats from one size to the next. Now, more often, you size by one. You know, you go up by just a little bit. Now, if it's a two size to low hat, like if I found my dream hat that's a seven and one fourth, and I'm trying to stretch it to a seven and a half, probably not gonna happen because if I stretch it out too much, it's going to lose integrity of the actual shape of the hat. But if you're stretching from a size down from a seven and three eighths up, or if you're sizing a seven and a half just to fit a little bit better, that is completely possible. For this, we're going to go into the lab and do a demonstration on how to stretch out a hat. I'm gonna go over it briefly, because I know that so many other hat channels have gone through how to stretch out a hat, but I'll just go over my tips and tricks and my uh, philosophy on stretching out hats. <laughs> Alright class, welcome to Professor Hatter's laboratory. We're in here it's Billy, I know it's the basement. We're by the washing and dry machine. I can you just go along with it? Huh? Thank you. So I have here the equipment all I need for stretching out a hat. Of course, the hats themselves. I have three different hats, two hats that are the seven and a half size, but don't quite fit. They fit a little tight. So I'm going to, you know, these would be one that I would stretch out. And then one of them is a seven and three eighths that obviously does not fit from the get go, which will have to stretch out a little bit more than the other two. But in terms of actually stretching out the hat, the jack that you'll need kind of dependent on what hat size you are. I know in the Hat Club websites, and I'm sure among other retailers, they have three different sizes, sometimes two. There's a small, I have a medium, 
and then a large one. So, of course, you'll have to use one of the hat jacks, the cylinder head here. So when you do put the hat jack in, you'll want to make sure that everything is flush on the inside. That when you are, that you put it in, for me, I like to have the hat club symbol on the top, that way when I crank it, it's like I'm running up a motorcycle, that way it's a little bit more of a familiar motion. Make sure that it's all flat with the sweatband and the actual cap itself. And then stretch it out just to where you feel just a little tightness. It's not stretched out all the way. It's not cranked out all the way it could go. Because to properly stretch out your hat, you will need a steamer. Some sort of maybe ironing board, I guess, ironing thing. Or really... These steamers work a whole lot better. A teapot could work out too. I know that Drake 616 has done comparisons of using a steamer compared to a teapot for using steam to stretch out the hat. But no matter which one you use, always use steam to stretch out your hat. If you don't use steam to stretch out your hat, you're going to have a bad time and a really bad experience. Your hat is going to go back to the same old size it was. So no matter what piece of equipment you use for steam, it is vital that you use steam. It's like making a sword. A blacksmith using heat to manipulate the metal, the material of the sword to shape it just the way they want to. Same thing with a hat. When you're using steam, the hat loosens up. It can breathe a little bit easier. It can a looser feel. That way it can stretch out and keeping it inside the hat jack, that's how you keep it at that new size. Because if you don't use steam, it's not going to learn the new size you want to be. But with the steam, you're using distilled water, of course, in your steamer because otherwise you're going to get some cruddy minerals and it's not gonna bode well for the hat so make sure you use distilled water steam is magic for the hat when you're stretching it out and of course when you're stretching it out and you're using steam i like to use a glove just so that when it is really hot i'm not all that burned from the steam depending on which steamer you're using or how hot the steam is for me this guy was 15 dollars at walmart it's very hot, very convenient, $15, it was perfect, and it served me very well. Hat Jack is about anywhere from $15 to $22, I think, but you have to use steam so that the hat can learn its new size. Now, when you do actually steam the hat, I'm not going to do it now, but take about 30 seconds or so on each side, the, the side, the back, and the other side, give it a crank. Or two, not so much though, maybe a crank and a half. Do it again about three times, and then let it sit for about 12 hours, and then either every four hours give it a crank, or every six hours give it a crank. So that way it can, over time, progressively stretch out to the new hat size. And of course, when you do stretch out all the way, of course, when you, when you do stretch out the hat and release the hat, you put it on, don't feel concerned that, oh my god, it's too big. I stretched it out too much. It will redact. It will back to its kind of size, but it'll learn the new size. It'll shrink back, but it'll feel a bit more natural. That's why you kind of don't crank it up all the way at one time. That way it's a small progression. That way it's easier to manipulate then and have more control of the hat with the hat jack. So, you can find it at the Hat Jacks anywhere. The Hat Jack, the best way to stretch out your hat to a new size from a 7 3 to 7 half, or go up a, a size, or to just stretch out just a little bit of a hat that, you sh that should fit you in your size, but just doesn't really fit quite right. <laughs> I know we covered a lot in class today. Uh, let's just do a little review here. 
that when you're finding your first fitted hat, go ahead and ask the lid people. Uh, more often, they'll know what to do. They'll give you some good advice. And if not, if you're like in my situation where I had to guess on my hat size, well, try this trick of if you're on the more slim side of a body type, so I would say seven and three eighths. It's the most, one of the most popular hat sizes in America. And then from there, go up or down if seven three eighths doesn't fit right. Or if you know that you're on the bigger body type size, start with say seven three fourths, and then go from there, up or down. And then go until you find a hat that fits around the head, not on top. Because if it's on top of your head, it's going to have some loose areas and it's not going to be a true fit. It'll fit around your head, but it won't feel comfortable. Now, everyone you know, might have a preference on you want a hat maybe that fits a little loose. Maybe you want to have it fit a little snug. Maybe because you have a preference of curving your brims that you get a maybe smaller hat size so that that way when you bend the brim that it'll form to your natural hat size. And even then, if it still doesn't fit, you can always stretch it out with a hat jack. Of course, do your best to try on hats in store at a lid store at Dick's Sporting Goods if you're so blessed to have a hat club near you. Or if you're in New York City and you find one of dozens hat stores on every other street corner, like you can find a 7-Eleven there, or any other mom-pop hat store that you can find, try on in store, of course. But for like Hat Club Online, or Hat Heaven, or eBay hats, try to do your best with your judgment. Try to, like with the Hat Club, I've been trying to size down, and that way it's easier to jack up the hat rather than try to shrink it. It's easier to stretch out than to go back in and shrink the hat, because it's pretty dangerous to try to shrink your hat. And of course, with different materials, there's different sizing as well, and different countries of origin where the hat is made, that also makes a difference. If you have any more further questions, feel free to ask them down below. If you have any tips on hat sizing, hat stretching, or hat shrinking even, even if it's going in the oven, comment down below. I love hearing your comments. I love having great discussions in the comment sections with you students. I really don't care about the likes for my videos. I don't do, likes don't do me any good. I love talking with you students in class here through the discussion board, through the comment section. That's what I love so much about the YouTube platform. We can have a nice discussion on this topic in one place. So if you are not subscribed to the channel, if you're new to here, and you like this content, I hope I've earned your subscription, I hope I earned your enrollment into this university. Uh, we are tuition free, so I hope that does help. We're going to have a lot more fun with hat chats in the future. I have a lot more ideas that I'm not going to talk about here, it's going to be a lot of fun in the future. I'm going to try to do one hat chat a month, but of course keep your notifications set so that you're not late for class and that you don't have to copy off of someone's notes from class. And make sure you're doing your homework. As always, hats off to you for watching. I know this was a long video. I love talking about hats. That's why I talk so much and I just talk a lot. I know this is a very, very long video, longer than I anticipated. I'm looking at my timer over there. Raw recording time is about 45 minutes. So I hope to fully whittle this down to about half an hour. We'll see. Anyways, as always, hats off to you for watching. Hope to see you the next time in class for either a hat chat or any other video that I make. I'll see you next time in class. Class is dismissed. Bye everyone.